Hi everyone, Bridget Rodriguez here with Absolute High TN Injection Molding Machines. In this series, we're going to be talking about the best practices for purchasing a new injection molding machine. And today we're going to cover the upfront cost as well as the long-term cost of ownership of the machine. And again, this will be from the customer's point of view. If you heard my last video, um, you heard that I have 15 years of experience in the molding industry manage the maintenance department and that budget. I worked with vendors in, in getting parts and service and also have a background in lean continuous improvement. So we'll be looking at these things from that point of view. The first thing that we really wanna understand is that it's not just a price tag. It's not just the, the number that you're cutting the check for when you buy a machine. Um, there are a lot of other factors that go into the long-term cost of ownership of the machine. So looking at the upfront costs, we want to be aware of the standard features that are included in the base price. We want to understand the vendor's in-house capabilities, and we also want to understand whether or not the, the vendor benefits from economies of scale. We're also going to look at the long-term costs, what it costs to um, to, in dealing with the downtime on the machine, what it costs to maintain a machine. We're gonna look at the aftermarket support, which includes parts and service and other, uh, other things that need to be considered. So first of all, let's take a look at what's included in the base price of the machine. You really wanna take a look at the quote that you got and see what's included as a standard feature. As you, if you see, that your machine, um, that the platen and the tie bar, tie bars are options on the machine and they don't come as standard, well, that's something that you wanna take a look at and maybe ask a few questions because you're probably not getting the best deal. You wanna know what's included. And then if you do have options that you wanna add, you wanna understand what the pricing would be for those. So another upfront cost that you wanna be aware of is does the customer have in-house capabilities. For example, HITN can cast their own platens, make their own screws and barrels, wind their own screw motors. Those are things that can, that can lower the cost, um, improve the quality, reduce the lead time, because we're able to control all of those things in-house. We're not relying on somebody that's um, outsourced and out of our control. Um, it gives us flexibility. If, if you want to have a custom uh, bolt hold pattern in your platen, or if you prefer T-slots, we can do that quickly and easily because we do that in-house. So you want to check to see what your vendors can do in-house. When you buy a new machine, is the installation is included? Is the training included? What kind of training is included? Are they going to train all of your people, even on other shifts? Those are things that you want to consider. And looking at economy of scale, if a vendor is large, they're able to get high quality materials at a reduced rate. Um, for example, as you may know, HITN is the number one injection molding machine supplier in the world. We sell about 35,000 machines a year. And because of that, we're able to purchase high quality raw materials at a reduced rate. Now, if you have a vendor that um, is purchasing smaller quantities of material, in order for them to compete with the cost, they're going to have to lower the quality. So you want to understand whether or not your vendors are able to benefit from economy of scale. And then another thing in understanding long-term cost is how much is your downtime costing you? If, if I ask you that question and you tell me, oh my gosh, I don't know, that machine's just down all the time and it costs us a lot of money. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty vague. And I would challenge you to put a number on it and, um, and get some data behind that because that could, that, that could justify um, a need for you to get a new machine. And then you want to know how much is it going to cost to maintain your new machine. Which gets us into the next topic is aftermarket support. Aftermarket support is huge. And um, with HITM, we view it as a service. Um, we don't view it as a profit center. Many vendors view aftermarket as a profit center. So that's something that you really want to have a good understanding of. Uh, does, does the service department have enough service engineers to cover 
um, nationwide. It, are they able to troubleshoot online or over the phone and get the machine back up and running in a few hours instead of a few days? Um, these are things that you want to know whether or not you're going to have access to. Um, you also want to have, have a good understanding of the parts. Um, with ITN, our parts, many of the components are off-the-shelf components. Um, you want to know if the parts are off-the-shelf or if they're proprietary. If they're proprietary, they could cost three to four times the price, as well as have an eight to 12 week lead time, which is going to significantly significantly impact your downtime and whether or not you may be able to meet customer orders. Another thing you wanna understand with the long-term cost is, are you able to make modifications after market? Um, are there engineers on staff to uh, make modifications to the software? Um, when you're buying a machine, does a controller come with 10 different access levels, but you need to pay extra every time you want to access a different level? Um, or are all the levels included in the base price? Um, another thing you want to consider is, does your machine play well with others? Can you add a robot? Does it have the right interface? Um, what, are you, what are you looking for with Industry 4.0? Are you... Are you getting everything that you need um, in the basic machine package or with another option or two, or are you paying a premium for a buzzword? Those are things that you would really wanna think about um, before you write that check. And finally, how well does the machine hold its value over time? And if it's, and how do you know this is a very good question. If the answer is, well, I have a warm, fuzzy feeling because it was the first machine that I ever learned how to process on, that's not data driven. And I just wanna let you know that there's data out there in the field um, that's not tied to any specific vendor. And you can see how well machines hold their value over time. HITN happens to be in the top of four tiers, um, but that's something that you definitely wanna know before making the purchase. And then you also want to know how agile is your vendor? Is there a lot of red tape that they need to get through before they can make a decision? Or are they flexible? I mean, if you're trying to get a customer on board, you may need your vendors to be flexible and move pretty quickly. So that's something to keep in mind also. So just a quick review. We want to have a really good understanding of the cost up front, which, um, what is all included in the standard features and in the base price of the machine. Um, what are your vendors in-house capabilities? Are they benefiting from economy of scale? And then when considering the long-term cost, how much is your downtime costing you on an old machine? Does it make sense to get a new machine in there? And then how much will it cost to maintain your, your new machine? You want to finally, finally you want to have a really good understanding of how well you are going to be supported after you purchase your machine. Is the parts and service department going to support you the way you need them to? Those are things you definitely want to keep in mind before making your next machine purchase. So with that, I'd like to thank you. And, and I'd also like to ask you if you have any recommendations of videos that you'd like to see us do, let, let us know and reach out to us. And again, I appreciate it. Have a great day.